path as anthropology started at AUCA. And Emil pushed me to, uh, to choose anthropology of dance as a, my master thesis, well, my um, bachelor's thesis. Another anthropologist. <laughs> So I was um, a bit confused. I didn't really um, under—I couldn't understand how it's possible to combine dance and anthropology. Being um, being um, third year student at AUC, when Emil told me, "Would you like to dance? Why not to write about this?" I was like, "Really? Okay, let let me try." And then I tr I, I was googling. Um, uh, books of anthropology, and it's very, very unique and very old, like in that terms. If anthropology is um, quite a recent phenomenon in Kyrgyzstan, and dance anthropology even more recent phenomenon, and I, I'm not sure people know about it. But in the uh, Western world, it's quite well known, and scholars write books about this, they travel, they live um, in the tribes in Africa and Australia. My professors, they spend years, 20 years, 15 years in Africa, in um, other countries. And they really investigated culture through dance. And one of my professors, uh, um, Andre Gro, um, she passed away recently and she uh, conducted her field work in um, Australia. Tiwi um, community of Aboriginals, Tiwi uh, called Tiwi. And so she started to look at the dance, but then she um, ended up with kinship and she found out that uh, dance is connected to kinship. And through dance, they become relatives to each other and um, they um, also, it connected with the dreams. So what they dream, then they do it in the like in a circle, and they perform it to each other. Um, so yeah, um, my master thesis I did in four countries. Actually, it was Curiomundus International Master Program, Joint Master Program. Uh, it was in Norway, France, Hungary, and Lond in Great Britain. We were 15 students from all over the world, and we shared cultures, we shared our own perspective on dance. And then I found out that um, ideological influence uh, on culture and on dance specifically is very huge. So what we have here, our preconceptions, like the communism, um, collectivization, this is all has impact on how we teach, how we perceive information. Whereas in uh, Western society, they really um, liberate their hands, their mind, and they just think of themselves. They don't think of how people will look at me, will I look stupid or what, they just, they have themselves and their body. And that's it, they just, they just dance for themselves. Also the age, like I, I saw 60 years old women who, who were dancing normally and without any like shyness. Um, so it was <laughs> hard for me to select um, the important um, things uh, to talk about anthropology of dance. So what I selected, um, yeah, we will go through this now. Uh, you can walk, therefore you can dance. You can breathe, therefore you can sing. So everyone can dance, basically. Um, the problem of concept. The concept dance appears to be an unsatisfactory category imposed from a Western point of view because it tends to group together diverse activities that should be culturally separated. So, as always, this is a holistic science. 
Um, and when we look at anthropology of dance, we can't just do it from the perspective of anthropology or of choreography. If my background is anthropology and choreography, I'm lucky. I can do this anthropology of dance. But if my background is politics, I can, I can merge politics with dance. So let's um, dance in each society has its own interpretation and definition. So even, even the word like in Russian, это танец. In Kyrgyz, B. In Tatar, B U. The same. Uh, in, in Persian, it raks in Urdu as well. I think it's like this. Then in Spanish is ba baile, right? Somehow like this. Japanese. Huh? Oldori. Oldori. So what kind of dance is this? Is it? General. General. Do you have any other word for this? You, we put something in front, then make it special. Mm -hmm. That's how our language comes from. Yeah, so, so in like the summertime, if you are dancing for the summer festival, then it is called Bon Odori. Mm -hmm. Because this is specifically to the ancestors. Yeah. So it relates to the name Bon, relates to ancestor and mm -hmm. worship. So dance is about context, yeah. settings. Yeah. Um, we have stage dance, we have folk dance, we have traditional dance, we have modern, blah, 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 etc. And um, also we have game. In um, very many communities, like in Turkish, in um, Tatar as well, uh, some words which are connected to games are related to dance as well. So you cannot just define dance as dance. You look at stage, okay, this is dance. But it can, can be a game as well. So for me, confusion was that I was not taught how to perceive dance, how to relate to dance. And uh, this misinterpretation and um, like, um, it's very popular to say, okay, narodny tanitz. No narodny, like the, the, the folk. In, in, in English, it's either national or folk, but national can be Kyrgyzstani dance. But what is Kyrgyzstan? We have so many cultures, we have so many people. So this is very complicated thing to look at. And therefore, professors and uh, choreographers, you, they need to specify and uh, like maybe this is the problem of um, the scholars who should define what is what. Um, dance is a structured movement system, symbolic activity applied only on humans. It's multisensorial, feelings, emotions. It's somatic, body, kinetic movement, linguistic, like it has its own plot. Um, how do we perceive dance? Um, I had one girl, uh, she, she's from Nepal. Her name is Tristi. Uh, if you might be, uh, just, just Google her or in, oh, Tristi, Casey. She's completely blind. Uh, she lost her sight when she was uh, 16 years old because of wrong uh, prescription of the doctor. He didn't tell her how to take those medicines. And after a while, she started to lose her sight. In the end, she found out herself blind. Uh, she was learning dances on her own. She was listening to music and doing Nepalese dances. None of educational institutions want to uh, 
take her to, uh, f to study at their place because there were no opportunities, there were no um, equipment, nothing. But she completed um, her bachelor and then we appeared with her in our master program. And when you see her dancing, it's like I was crying, literally I was crying. Um, and she was uh, doing her um, master thesis on the, like how you feel dance. So can you imagine you're blind and you only uh, can hear the music. And she um, developed um, such techniques. So she was using uh, some kind of bells on the wrist, on the head, on the hip. So if so many people stand uh, next to each other, so if you hear how hips are moving, so that means everyone is moving their hips. Also, it's about the uh, proximity. The, like first she was um, walking around the stage, okay, with her stick, um, like f feeling, feeling the space, and then she asked to turn her in front of the audience. Sometimes she got lost when she d did many turns. But in general, when you look at this person, you, you understand that uh, there is always hope. You, should, uh, you shouldn't give up. And it doesn't matter if you are Im um, impaired or if you are partially blind or blind or deaf. There is always a possibility to dance, to sing, to move. And she opened her um, Blind Rocks. It's an organization. And she teaches people how to dance and how to feel dance. Um, so we can divide dance anthropologists into folklorists, dance anthropologists, ethnochoreologists, ethnomusicologists. So there is such a field as choreology and ethnochoreology. It's, um, so you can read dance through culture is ethnochoreologists, ethnomusicologists, relationship between music and dance. It's when, um, what starts first? When you hear music, what makes you move? Your body or the music? or vice versa. In um, um, some communities, when you have a social gathering and people play violin, and you have connection between musician and the dancer. So uh, who is like a ruler of, of this event, dance event? Um, this is also interesting, um, interesting topic to look at when the, the, this relationship, if it's congruent or not, the, the music and movement. Um, so I told about linguistic and um, the RAM I know for uh, dance notations. So if I can't speak Persian or I can't speak Arabic, but I know um, the, the dance notation, which is universal, which consists of the, um, of the symbols. I can easily understand Nepalese dance or, or Afghan dance if it's transcribed, if it's notated. So Lisitsan, this is Armenian a notator, but it's not really developed well. Then Benesh, it's uh, mostly for ballet. Uh, ballet techniques, ballet dances. And um, the most profound, most uh, elaborated one is Labonetation. Rodolf Laban, uh, he was German and he worked with uh, um, Hitler. <laughs> yes, and he developed this system of notation. Um, it's inclu it includes direction, level, body part, timing. We also have a kinosphere, which is like 
this, right? Th those angles. Um, so we have a direction, which is, let me give you this, which you can share. Can, can, can I give one here? Yeah. Um, so forward. You also have a, a special words for this. It's not just going straight, it's forward. Um, you see low, low that means you bend your knees. This is low level. High level, it's when you're on the toes. In middle level, you just stand straight. Um, it, um, it also uh, for the arms, low level, middle level, up. And it has, so you can also um, see the, signs for, so it's like that. Then you have a line for arms, then you have line for ears, nose, elbows, uh, not elbows, the like props, what you dance with. Um, we can try. We can stand and read uh, those who have. Stand up. So let's try the, this, this one. This one. Number A. 2.2 two A. So we, we stand straight, uh -huh. then it's step, who, who can tell, who can show? It's step forward. It's A, this. This is, this is forward. So let's do step forward, uh -huh. and then we see the left. It step forward again, and then again, and then again. Can you see it? No. This one. What? Ah, why we fall down? Because we fall down. Like you, you are not reading it. You are not reading it from left to right or from up from uh, up to down. It's from down to up. You see it? So when you have. So now, if those squares or whatever it is, is, uh, you stand, uh, you, you are on, the, on your toes. So you go the same steps, but on your toes. This is high level. And then if it is, completely black, mm -hmm. you do it on the low level, okay? You are not, you are not, um, they call it like you are not bouncing, you just go like that. If it's, if it's black, oh. yeah. <laughs> also arms, so what if, what if arms are like this? Look, what if arms are, are like this? It's just like straight. If it's this, yes. If it's black, yes. So, <laughs> yeah, cool. And then if, if it's to the, um, to the sides, you have this symbol, left, right? 
Yeah. So yeah, you can you can sit down. <laughs> The purpose of this uh, is to safeguard dance. Uh, so now we came to the point of uh, preserving dance and transmitting dance. So for instance, if uh, there is an indigenous community of people or even, even Kyrgyz community, let's say, so have you ever seen um, books about Kyrgyz dance? Like? Kyrgyz dance. No. Karajurgo appeared in 2014, very accidentally, when someone digged into the archives. And there is no trans uh, notation of dance. Therefore, we don't know the authentic dance how people really dance. If someone in that time or even now could uh, notate it like that, then you, we would know how precisely uh, reali uh, the, the precise realization of this dance. Uh, like this one, uh, we see Aluneli in Fundat, this is Romanian dance. So the notator, uh, Anka Gurcescu, she was a Romanian uh, dance anthropologist. So she notated this dance and then um, ah. okay. and so, so forth. So here you see that um, if you would know how to read this, you can, you can dance. <laughs> so this is another version of uh, notation. This is from 17th century. It is a Baroque dance. Um, yeah, I can read it. A page of uh, Foulet notation from 1721. In this case, a male dancer on the left and the female dancer on the right begin upstage. This is female, this is male. So they travel up, okay? Um, facing downstage. In the first mo uh, moment on this dance, the couple start with feet on different angles with the heel of the back foot touching the floor. Time values indicated by lines that cross over the central line of direction. Foulet was useful mostly for representing a series of movements that were already recognized and encoded. It was difficult to indicate precise R movements. So um, this is the indication of the direction. So he told it to the different sides. So either here or there. Um, so um, that's how I was told by one professor that during the time of Ludovic XIV and this, um, this era, <clears throat> all women, they could read those, uh, how they prepared for balls. They were reading and then they were dancing. There were no rehearsals like we have now. And they were reading and then uh, doing couple dances. Um, another thing to uh, preserve dance and to read dance is dance analysis. <clears throat> if you want to, like it depends on your question of course. Um, this is one of the example of dance analysis. You see it's, it's not just entertainment, it's science. You have formulas, <laughs> and this is. Uh, 
it, it's not really uh, complicated, but yeah, it is. <laughs> I don't really like those dense analysis. Um, what I wanted to say. Ah, okay, so for instance, those um, S, T, S, P, H, M, this is um, like um, phrase, motive, motive cell, for example, this is uh, like this un one of the scholars. This is motive. This is motive cell. This is motive element. So every single detail of your body when you dance consists of, uh, of cells. So um, there is an element, a sequence, element, like those stratas of, of dance. And everything is described. This is my example when I was in the first year, I was analyzing Ethiopian dance. I chose um, <laughs> the easiest way. <laughs> so you, when you see the video, you can divide dance into several sections. Um, and then when you read and when you understand, it's, it's fine. You can, you can grasp the idea. So I was trying to find um, who is um, um, uh, 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 yeah, first you, you, you have a question and then you analyze it to, to find out. What is the dance expresses? It's either about expression, it, it depends. Like uh, in my case, there were male and female and I wanted to look um, whose part is more ex, uh, expressive and more... Um, oh, yes. I forgot this word in, even in Russian. It's the main part, right? Yeah, the two, right? who is the main in the dance. So in the, then according to the numbers and according to the letters, you see. It's easy to kind of analyze, yes, yeah, in numbers. Right? Yeah. Um, Okay, if we have notation, we also have other things. And since it's anthropology, it's all about field work. <laughs> field work, archiving, and documenting dance. The tools for documentation, dance notation, film, video, motion capture. <clears throat> Does anyone know what is motion capture? Motion. <laughs> in the capture. <laughs> mm -hmm. So in, um, in dance, when you study dance or when you research dance, <clears throat> you, if you're filming, now we have a two-dimensional, right? 2D. You have 1D. But if you want to look uh, on the body and how everything moves, you need to have 3D. Therefore, you have a motion capture. So motion capture, for instance, in this room, imagine you have uh, four cameras. There, 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 there. And then you are, um, you have uh, metal, those stickers around your body on the, <clears throat> on the joints or whatever you want to see. Then, um, then on the screen, like that, okay? So on the screen, you may see how person moves. It's about technical, technical um, side of, of dance anthropology or of dance itself. Uh, even when you, when you place women and men and you place those um, things, and they will walk. There is, there, there is no face, no, it's just the dots. But the dots can say who is woman, who is man, mm -hmm. according to, to the moves. Like, man can walk like that without using his hips, for instance. But still we were 
uh, we were arguing, I had a gay um, a classmate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was, no, 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 no. Like, we were arguing because uh, he said, but that could be a man as well. So you never know. And it's also contradicting the social factors. Um, I have time, right? It's OK? OK, it, it's the last one about this. Um, the thing I'm concerned about is um, intangible cultural heritage in Kyrgyzstan. <laughs> um, you know what is this? Intangible cultural heritage is immaterial heritage. Immaterial um, cultural heritage. Блин, где он? Um, and it's, it was ratified and signed by UNESCO. Um, there is a convention 2003 about safeguarding in, of intangible cultural heritage. It includes uh, oral traditions, performing arts, social practices, rituals, festive events, knowledge and practices cons uh, concerning nature and the universe, traditional craft craftsmanship. Um, I know that Mongolia and many, many other countries, they really care and aware that we need to safeguard uh, our oral tradition, our dances. But for this, in order to apply to UNESCO, community itself needs to um, ask UNESCO co um, ICH committee in this or that country uh, to safeguard. So for safeguarding, you go into the community, you, you, you talk to people, you, um, you take notes, you preserve dance, you do notation, you um, record, you do everything which is possible in order to save as many details as possible. So also there is um, um, urgent safeguarding list when um, the community has a ritual or dance which is about to die or disappear and they ask please do something because I am the only one who can make this bread. So the technique of making bread has to be written down or has to be recorded by someone. Otherwise, after 20 years, after 50 years, n no one will know what was, how we did our bread, because we will have factories or we will have other ways of doing this. Um, yes. <laughs> and recently, uh, Norus um, event, uh, it was joined by all those um, Central Asian countries. Uh, has been um, put into the list of safeguarding ICH. Um, this is about dance. And I can just briefly tell about my thesis, right? We don't all that is not. Islamic reflection, the other folk dance. Um, this is my my baby. <laughs> and so I was, um, I was curious if, if Tatar dance has its impact or influence from Islam, because I found out that many um, groups and choreographers, they never tell about the prehistory of dance and the meaning of dance, the meaning of the movement. Why do we wear scarves? Why, do we, why should we wear pants? Um, and so I want people to be aware that this is an important factor. And anthropologists, they basically do it and they write about it and then they talk to people. So this is like a link between. Um, that was my research question. Are there restrictions in Tatar folk dance based on religious conception which are still preserved? I did my um, field work in Russia, in Tatarstan. 
then in Chuvashia and in Kirov Oblast. In Chuvashia, I found uh, Mishar, Misharlar, Mishar Tatars, who still preserve those authentic uh, elements of dance. That was my methodology, as usual, semi-structured interview, field notes, participant and participant observation, and media. Um, I spent overall two months. Um, that was my results. I found Alten Basso dance, which is this one. Alten Basso dance. This woman is uh, 80 years old, and uh, she is the the perfect dancer of of this of this Alten Basu dance. And um, my my supervisor in Budapest, he he was conducting his research in 1993 in Chuvashia, and was interviewing the same woman, and that time she was looking like that. Yeah. And I found it in archives in Budapest. Mm. So I went there, and I saw like, I know this woman, I, because he was writing um, down in the screen names and uh, the location. I was like, oh wow. I was very surprised to find out this. And this is about archiving and documenta uh, documenting. So if you have any research and you want more information, unfortunately, I'm not sure if we have that big archive in Kyrgyzstan with, uh, when, you, when you can just, I need dances from uh, Philippines. Okay, let me see. No, there is nothing like this here. Therefore, it's either we need people who can collect all this information, but please keep in mind that this is very important and very useful thing if you want to study deeper. Um, so you, you saw the, how she uh, were moving her handkerchief and hands and everything. So that's how he explained to me what is what. Um, yeah, maybe some of you already saw this presentation. But anyways, so this is high level of modesty. When you close your eyes and you're super modest and shy, then modest until the level of your nose Brave until your chin, the variation of braveness. Then when you play with the man, and this is sex in the 70s. I mean, this is, a, th that was considered when you had a couple dances after, um, after Soviet Union came and they spread their own way of dancing and their own way of dressing. So that was considered to be norm. But before all the dances, they were separately danced. Uh, we can, yeah, we can try sex in the seventh. I mean, it calls Zalida. Uh, this this move, move called Zalida. Uh, So nothing, nothing complicated. Is it the name of the dance? Or is it just a 
No. <laughs> Which one? No, 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 it's not the name. <laughs> that how he uh, described this to me, this, this uh, movement to dance together, couple dance. The couple dance came in 70s, so that's why I can... What do you consider as a dirty? Not dirty, it was just not... Uh, they, didn't, they didn't have it. They didn't... It was not a norm. Как это And do the same. 